All right, hello everybody, welcome back, Carl again. Today I wanna to talk about my Arduino controlled LED driver. And let me give you a brief uh, background on what my plan was here. So I have a, an aquarium, a reef tank, and I'm interested in buying some LEDs. So I was looking online to buy some LEDs or black boxes, some people call them. And a lot of those are controlled with like a manual dimmer. So there's like an adjustable pot and that's how you dim them. And, and you can spend more money and get a automatic dimmer one, but I'm not really interested in that. I really am a do-it-yourselfer, and I want to do stuff myself so I know how they work, so when they don't work, I can fix them. So uh, I love Arduino. So this board underneath here is a do-it-yourself Arduino that I etched up. If you don't have to use this one. You could use a store-bought Arduino. That'd be perfectly fine. Anyhow, I wanted to use an Arduino and have some kind of shield that I would put on and I could control my LEDs. So, here's what I have. This is in uh, zero to 10 analog voltage PD PWM driver. So the, the Arduino controls these two op amp here, and those two op amps accept zero to five volt input and give, give me zero to 10 volt output PWM. So, uh, I have an LCD, LCD 16 by two. I have four buttons here and here. And the code that I'm currently running is the Typhoon code. Typhoon is an open source hardware controller that a gentleman designed, uh, actually two gentlemen designed uh, a couple years back and they post about it on the forum. You can actually buy that from, I think it's Steve's LEDs. Uh, for a while, I think Boost LED was selling them. Anyhow, um, I'll try to put a link down below. If not, just Google or Yahoo, whatever you like to use. Typhoon LED controller and you'll see all the posts about it. So. Uh, let me talk about my design here. So this is the shield that I designed. It takes 10 volts on the input. Uh, this is a ground block. This is a three volt battery for the real time clock, which is surface mount underneath of this board. I have power and ground going to my LCD. I have four 10K resistors and that's for the buttons. I have two op amps. I have a bunch of 10K resistors some uh, 10 UF capacitors, and then the outputs are over here on the right. And for the time being, I just have four LEDs as my examples. And I believe it's one, two, three, four are my numbers. You know, output one, output two, output three, and output four. And this is just simulating my load. In the background, I'll pull the uh, oscilloscope up so you guys can see the, the voltage out. A couple changes I made are, one, I did not, I made this a shield because my thought process was instead of somebody having to buy an entire setup, they could already have an Arduino and just really care about this shield. All they have to do is basically put the shield together. These op amps are LM358, super inexpensive. Of course, 10K resistors or jelly bean resistor, a 2.1 millimeter input. I have a couple terminal blocks, which really aren't needed. You could just solder the wires directly to the board. I thought it would just make it easier connecting up to the LED drivers. And then the LCD display, instead of tying them to all these digital output pins, I just used the 80 fruit LCD backpack. Super simple, it runs off all IC, uh, I squared C. Really easy to implement. I've talked about that in prior videos. So that was my easy solution. And that makes this really portable. Uh, underneath you see these wires. These are, uh, after the fact, I just tied A4 and A5 over here to the R3 pinout of the uh, IC, I squared C so that I could utilize the I squared C bus over here because that's where the real-time clock is actually tied into. Okay, another note. The other thing I, did, the other thing I want to talk about is the Typhoon code. The reason why I use the Typhoon code is I really, there's a pretty extensive amount of work that went into developing that code, and I hate to just reinvent the wheel. Frankly, I don't know that I'm that good of a software developer to really write that kind of code all the way from scratch. And two, it's almost like why reinvent the wheel? If the code is already there, I might as well just stay with it. So the way that code works is it uses the real-time clock, and then you set the variables, it stores in an EEPROM, and away you go. So I, I was pretty happy with the quality of that code and it was a huge time saver. So uh, I can say I did have to change one thing in the uh, uh, C file instead of it being like w.program now it's arduino.h 
And there's actually some improved versions of that Typhoon code. If you search around the forums for that, there's an improved Typhon code. You know, people who are better software developers that make some improvements. So you can kind of use that if you wish. What I really wanted to talk about was the analog 0 to 10 volt out from the Arduino. So uh, this is designed to accept 10 volts on the input. Originally, I had put right here a spot for a 10 volt regulator so you could put 12 volts in and then give yourself 10 volts out on the VN pin, which would then power the Arduino. And this Arduino, as you can see, a heat sink sticking out actually has a 5 volt regulator on it. So that was originally my intention. Uh, I couldn't really find a 10 volt regulator. I thought I had one in stock. I probably should have put an LM317, then I could just use two resistors to set that. But unfortunately, I already had the board designed. So I just decided to, instead of going through all that hassle, I have a, a boost converter or buck converter, whatever you want to call it, that'll just step down voltage. So I'm just going to use that, give myself 10 volts on the input. That gives me 10 volts into Arduino, which I'm only dropping to 5, so it shouldn't make a ton of heat for the Arduino, and then that allows me the 0 to 10 volt swing I need to drive my PWM outputs. So let me just get this set up here so, so hopefully you can see uh, the LCD screen. The other reason why I like the idea of using uh, not having a regulator is that gives you the ability, if you already happen to have a 10 volt wall ward or something, you know, you could easily just modify anything to make that work. And that's my, that might be what I end up doing is just taking an LM317 and stick it in, in a small little box and just make myself a dedicated power supply for this. And that way I can put a nice fuse in there so that way I don't blow this board up. So what I'm going to do is power this board on and I'll run through how I got the button set up. Uh, so this is my display screen. I'm actually running the version of 0.3 firmware. And you can see that it's currently 310 here. I'm on Eastern Standard Time. And all three of my channels are at 100%. Now if I just pan out here, you can see that all three of my LEDs are actually at 100%. Okay, one other note. On the LCD backpack, here's one here that I have. And remember, this is the MCP23008. Uh, this is real simple. Works off odd squared C. It has this... NPN transistor, a 1K resistor, potentiometer for the LCD contrast, a capacitor, and this chip, and that's it. Uh, there's also this 10K pull-up. And so what happens is the Arduino talks to this over I squared C. It uses a function called set backlight high or set backlight low through this pin here on the MCP. And Lady Ada actually wrote the code where you just call LCD set backlight high it pulls this uh, pin low, which then turns the backlight on. So one of the other mods I did, and that's this wire right here, which actually goes to D10, is I cut this resistor and actually tied in the base of this transistor to this pin. And the reason why you wanna use pin 10 is because in the Typhoon code, they actually have a function called backlight and then actually adjusts the backlight brightness. So based upon the day, it'll actually leave it. So if I push a button, it'll actually turn the backlight on. So that's why I wanted to keep that function intact. I didn't want to have to rewrite all of the code. So I wanted to keep that function intact. Now I think eventually what I'm going to do is make a small little do-it-yourself proto shield, which is just a cheap piece of perf board so that I can put all these on permanently. Right now they're just soldered to heather wires or header pins. And I mean, I only have the LCD square module in here. Uh, so real quick, uh, ground is going to the breadboard ground. Each one of the channels is tied to an LED, and you can see they're all 100%. Okay, so now as you can see, I'm running at 100% on the LCD, I mean, excuse me, on the uh, oscilloscope. Down here at the bottom, which you might not be able to see, is I have this on the mean, and it says 8.78. So that's essentially my max voltage. I'm running at 10 volts on the input. Now, one thing I don't have, and I'm going to have to make a follow-up video, is I don't actually have the LCDs yet or excuse me, the LEDs. So I'm kind of making this video prior to actually getting the, the LEDs. But I just want to make sure I have a proof of concept, a concept to get this to work before I go buy the LEDs. According to the directions I've seen and all the information I've read online, that anything uh, at about nine volts is 100%. So I'm actually pretty much right on the money. And what I'll do is I'll just tweak my input voltage. I don't know how accurate my voltmeter is on the my adjustable power supply so I just tweaked it just to ten and a half volts and it's saying that I have nine volts 
and I have 100% output with the LEDs. Now what I'll do is I'm going to go into manual mode and turn it off. Oh, this button here is menu. This button here is select. Over here, the red up top is plus, and the black down here at the bottom is minus. So I'm going to go to menu, and I'm going to take it off timer mode and go to off. And you can see that I lose the voltage as well as the LEDs are off. Now I'm going to put it into... Oh, I hit the wrong button. I'm trying to place myself into manual mode so I can actually step the voltage up. So now we're in manual override mode and you can see all are at 0% and what I'll do is I'm going to start incrementing the, the display. Alright so now, now I'm at 50% you can see that I have a, a nice good analog voltage of 4.96 volts which is about half scale for 0 to 10 volts. I have a good brightness here on my LEDs and I'll just measure the voltage with the voltmeter here and the voltage on the voltmeter is saying 4.7 volts. Now the other interesting thing I want to do is measure the voltage from the pen. So we'll measure the voltage at the pen and it's giving me actually 2.4 volts. So half scale I'm at right at half scale, which is in my mind right where I need to be for my 0 to 10 volt analog swing. So now let's move it up some more. Let's go to 75%. So now as you can see at 75%, we have almost a full straight line because we're almost there. We're at 7.5 volts. I'm at a, a pretty good brightness there on my LEDs. And let's keep going. I'll go all the way up to 100 on the manual override. So there it is, there's a 100% manual override. You can see that I have a straight line because I have almost pure DC out. I'm sure if we zoom in, you'll see some ripple and you can actually see little flutters. I'm showing that I'm running at 8.92 volts down here for the mean voltage. And if I measure it with a voltmeter, I'm almost certain that's what I'm gonna get is about eight volts, maybe nine. And I'm getting 8.83. And then if I measure the pin coming out, the Arduino digital out pin, I'm gonna be right at five volts which is my input voltage. Okay, so now if I go back to my mode on uh, timer mode, that'll actually go back and because I'm in that mode already, it's gonna take me right back to 100% because in timer mode, that's where I should be at this time of day. Let me just scroll through the menus here and get back to the beginning. You see I'm at 100% all the way. And if I go back to the menu and I'm gonna turn them all off, You'll see I drop my voltage down and I lose that. So anyhow, I'm, I'm still trying to play with the controller and actually learn where, you know, how it all works, but it's pretty self-explanatory once you go through the menu here. One thing I will note from the little bit that I've played with it, uh, the way the Typhoon code works is it actually used min minutes since midnight. So for example, timer one comes on at 12.30 in the afternoon. Well, that's 750 minutes. So when you look at the code on the computer, it says channel one start time is 7.50. Well, I didn't understand that at first. Now, if you scroll through the menu, it says channel one start is 12.30. So I think it's actually easier to set the times with this. And remember, when you do that, it'll update the EEPROM in the Arduino. So it'll always remember those codes. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully this helps you out in your zero to 10 volt conversion. If you have any questions, please ask them down below. And do please hit the like button, that really does help out. I appreciate it a lot. Thanks guys.